Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're continuing on with the AP Physics 1 2018 free response question number three. So let's get into it. So the disc shown above spins about this axle at its center. A, student, a student's experiments reveal that while the disc is spinning, friction between the axle and the disc exerts a constant torque on the disc. Okay, so there's friction between this disc spinning around, which is realistic, right? Normally it, there would be some friction. At time t equals zero, the disc is an initial counterclockwise positive angular velocity omega naught. The disc later comes to rest at times t equals t1. On the gr grid on the left below, sketch a graph that could represent the disc's angular velocity as a function of time until the disc comes to rest at times t equals t1. On the grid at the right below, sketch the disc angular acceleration. Okay. So we had to think about what's happening. Um, I'm having uh, a, 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 a torque it's a constant torque, right? And the, the relationship between torque and angular acceleration is torque equals moment of inertia or rotational inertia times angular acceleration. So I is a property of this disk, so um, the rotational inertia. So if tau is constant, the torque, then the angular acceleration has to be constant. And it has to be fighting it. So that means like, um, uh, let's see. So I would do the angular acceleration first because I think that makes sense. Um, let's see, it would be negative because it would be slowing down. So it would equal to, and this value would be uh, negative tau over i, okay? Uh, until it comes to rest at t equals t1. Okay, so it's constant. And then the angular velocity starts at omega naught, and then it has to come to rest here. That means it stops spinning here. And the 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 the, the angular velocity omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha times t, right? So this is like this is like the rotational version of the kinematic equation, like v equals v naught plus acceleration times time. This is the angular. Uh, velocity version of it. And you'll note that basically uh, if alpha is constant then the angular velocity will just be a, a line. So it comes from, from there to there and it goes as a straight line between those two points. Because uh, that's the stop here. Because that will have no angular velocity at t1. And I think that makes sense. So the slope of this is this negative tau over i which is fine. The magnitude of the frictional torque exerted on the disk is tau naught. Derive an equation for the rotational inertia i of the disk in terms of tau naught, omega naught, t1, and physical constants as appropriate. Okay, so some of these equations kind of will lead us to this answer. We know that i would equal the torque over alpha. Okay, now we know the torque in this case is tau naught. Alpha is uh, the acceleration, and the way you would think of the acceleration is the slope of this line. It's the change in uh, angular velocity over the change in time. The change in time is t1, and the change is omega naught. So this is negative omega naught over t1, or i is equal to uh, tau, negative tau, t1 over omega naught. Sorry if I wrote that a little small, but hopefully that is clear enough. Uh, and I hope that makes sense. Uh, the acceleration is negative, right? Because the change goes from omega naught to zero and the slope is downward. That's why this negative sign is right here. Um, okay, that was pretty quick. Did I do everything right on part A? I, it's always good to double check your answers. Uh, the disk on the grid, sketch a graph as a function time. Just sketch. Sketch, okay, that's fine. Next part, um, in another experiment, the disk again has an initial positive angular velocity omega naught at time t equals zero. At time half t1, the student starts dripping oil on the contact surface between the axle and the disk to reduce the friction. As time passes, more and more oil reaches the contact surface, reducing the friction for even further. On the grid below, sketch a graph that could represent the disk angular velocity as a function time from zero to t1 which is the time it comes to rest. Okay, so it, it does come to rest, uh, uh, oh, in part A. So what's gonna happen is it's still like gonna head towards this line, right? So I kind of draw it like it's going this way because for the first half it's, it's acting just like it did in um, 
the, the previous one. And then now the, oops, so yeah, imagine that's a straight line. But now what's gonna happen is um, I'm gonna have less and less acceleration over time because I'm reducing the friction, so the torque is gonna go down, right? The torque is uh, due to the frictional force, right? And as the frictional force goes down, the torque will go down. That reduces the acceleration. And it would kinda like, I guess, level out-ish? Not level out, but just kinda curve. And it wouldn't quite stop here. Because remember, like because the, the torque is less, um, it, it, it couldn't stop. Now, how much it wouldn't stop, you don't really know, but it would slow down, so to speak, right? The, the slope of this would go down. And then similarly, um, we have the same thing here. The acceleration was the same, except now the acceleration is gonna decrease. And did they say how it's gonna decrease? Uh, more and more, the, well, let's just say it decreases linearly. Um, well, not linearly, I guess it would, it would just kind of reduce, so it would um, start going down, and I don't know if it would go down faster or slow. Yeah, maybe we'll just make it like this or something. And show there's a little bend because like, you know, I, I don't know how it's reducing the friction. It could be a line, it could be something else. It's not very specific as to what, but this is a plausible like shape of what the acceleration would be doing. It's gonna go down from here continuously and then just gonna, you know, go down less. The student is mathematically trying to model the magnitude tau of the torque exerted by the axle on the disc when the oil is present at times uh, greater than one half T1. The student writes down the following two equations, each of which includes a positive constant C1 or C2 with appropriate units. Torque is equal to C1, okay, or it's equal to those. With which equation better mathematically models this experiment? Um, okay, C1, C2 are positive. And he's saying that um, this, the torque increases over time, and here the torque decreases over time. That's the difference between these two being the numerator. What happens with T? As T increases, torque goes up. As T increases, torque goes down. So equation two is correct. The torque should decrease over time right and that's what equation two does so um and that's all there was that was a pretty quick question for the most part let's look at the scoring let's see one point for that one point for that we got that uh negative the entire time not constant constant okay. i is equal to omega the point is still earned if there's a minus sign for using negative tau not a negative omega naught. Okay, fine. Um, okay, so we did that equation correct. Looks like we got all the points. Uh, because tau decreases. Yep, okay. We got all the points in this one. So, that's good. Sorry, I was just skimming over the answers, making sure. You can check along. They have all the solution keys posted up on the website. So, if you want to just check along. Hopefully, I, I, if, you're, if you're reviewing this, you probably have seen the solution key. But hopefully, like, my explanation as I went through it, like, would make sense on how you approach the problem. So, um, yeah. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a comment, like, or subscribe. And I will see you uh, on the fourth free response question on the next video. Thanks. Bye.